The last thing that we want to do to set up wave accounting is to put in our customers and vendors. To do this, we're going to need to go to the gear icon in the upper right of the main screen. If we click on the gear icon, you'll see that there's an option for customers and vendors. Let's start with customers. As you can see, I don't have any customers set up yet. As of right now, there is no option in Wave Accounting to import customers in mass. That would be a nice feature to have, and hopefully they'll add it in the future. But for now, we're going to have to add each customer individually. So let's go up and add a new customer. Now as we look at this form, you can see that there's a red star next to the customer name field. And that's the only field that contains a star like that. This means that the customer name is really the only required field. Essentially, you could just write in the customer's name and save the form, and that would be sufficient for Wave Accounting, but it shouldn't be sufficient for you. Your customer database is perhaps one of your most valuable assets as a business, and having a complete profile for each of your customers allows you more flexibility to market to those customers. You'll be able to send out email flyers or coupons. You'll be able to mail out things to them if you wanted to. But you can't do that if you don't have the information on those customers. It's also helpful for analysis purposes, to understand where your different customers live. Are you doing more businesses in certain areas than in others? Do you want to focus more of your marketing in those areas? Being able to understand that requires you to have a really filled out and complete customer list. So, we're not going to take any shortcuts here. I really recommend that you completely fill out all of the information that you have available to you for every single customer. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the information for this customer. So we can come down here and add the customer name. We can add an email address for it. Now when we're dealing with businesses as customers, we'll want to make sure we understand who our contact person is at that business. So when we call the business, we know who we're asking for. That's what the first name and last name fields are for. So down here I can put that John Doe is my contact at Doe Enterprises. Now with this currency field, most of you are probably doing business in just one country. And so the currency will likely be the same currency as your default currency and there won't need to be any change here. However, if you're doing business in other countries, then this field becomes very important. Using this field, you'll want to list whatever currency you receive from that customer, not necessarily what the currency is of the country they're in. So for example, if you do business in Canada with companies in Canada, but they still pay you in US funds, then you'll want to leave this US currency, even though they may not normally do business in that currency in their own country. So don't get the country and the currency confused. The currency field here needs to be whatever currency you receive from that customer. If they're paying you in Canadian dollars, put Canadian dollars. If they're paying you in US dollars, put US dollars. For this one, Doe Enterprises is located in the United States, so I'm just going to leave this as US dollars. Now, that is the only information that's available for us to put on this screen. However, there's a lot more information that would be important to know about Doe Enterprises. Things like phone numbers, physical addresses, even websites, none of that's available here. So if you want to put in additional information in Wave Accounting, you'll need to click the Toggle Additional Info button that's tucked in at the bottom of the screen. And you can see once I click on that, I get all of the available fields for a customer. So let's go ahead and finish filling out the information for Doe Enterprises. One of the fields available is account number. Now most small businesses don't use account numbers. An account number is a, an additional way of identifying individual customers. Most small businesses use just the customer's name. However, if you have hundreds or thousands of customers, especially if they're individuals, a repeat in name is inevitable. And so sometimes businesses will use an account number as a way to differentiate between 
different customers. Also, if you're using lots of different types of software, maybe in addition to your accounting software, you have a customer relationship management software and a sales software, and keeping track of your customers across multiple softwares can be kind of cumbersome. Using account numbers can help with that because they tie one-to-one -one across all of your different systems. So if you have that kind of a setup, maybe you'll want to use an account number. For this particular example, we're going to keep things simple, and I'm just going to use the name of the company to identify it, and I'm not going to add an account number. But in your business, you may want to. Now, we'll want to go ahead and add a phone number for sure. Fax. Honestly, I'm seeing fax die away. With email and all of the other forms of communication, fax just doesn't seem to be a big one anymore. But if the company has a fax number and you use it, you can put that in there. We'll add their mobile phone. And maybe they even have a toll-free number. Definitely want to add their website. And now we can add the physical address. We'll need to start by adding the country. So in this case, they're in the United States. And then that will pre-fill, based on whatever country I'm in, what providences or states are available. So we'll say they're in California. I cannot spell. Now, that's their physical address, but sometimes you'll be shipping to your product to a different address than what you'll be sending the bill to. Maybe the bill goes to a corporate address and your shipping goes to a warehouse. If that's the case and they have two different addresses, then you can click this shipping address box and you'll get an additional address field. Maybe our shipping goes to Jane. United States again. You got it. There we go. In our United States again. Let's say it's also in California. And this will be on. And if there's any delivery instructions that you want to add, you can add those in as well. And now that's all of the fields that are available. So let's go ahead and save that customer. And we now have one of our customers completed. As I mentioned before, there isn't any ability to import from Gmail or anywhere else to be able to add these customers. So it's just going to be adding them one by one. You can do that over a weekend. Just sit down and pound them all out one by one. or you can choose just to add them as you need them um, as different invoices and things come up. Just kind of depends on, on how you operate with your business. Uh, either way is really fine, but you'll want to get as many of them in as you can so you've got a good database to work from. Now that we have our customers put in, let's go ahead and add our vendors. You can see that again, there isn't any import options for vendors either, so we'll go in and add a new vendor. So here we have our Add Vendor screen, and you'll see that it looks identical to the Add Customer screen. So the same types of rules would apply. You could just save it with a vendor name. However, I would highly recommend that you fill out all of the information so that you have a complete database of your different vendors. Now, if you have vendors like McDonald's or Walmart or Amazon, maybe you don't need to fill out all of their information. Um, for things simple like that, but it's really vendors you have a good relationship with that you're doing a lot of business with. Um, your suppliers for your different goods that you're selling, uh, any kinds of vendors who issue services to you, if you have a vendor you rent from, if you have your accountants, your lawyers, those kind of people you want to make sure that you have a complete profile filled out for them. So let's go ahead and fill one out right now. Let's do the vendor company.
And just like with the customer, if you want to fill out additional information, you'll need to just click the toggle additional info button at the bottom. And you can see that we have all of the same fields that we would have with the customer page. Now there is a field that I would like to point out with the vendors that is extremely important and is missing from Wave Accounting, and that is the Entity Identification Number, or EIN. An EIN to a business is like a social security number to a person. It helps identify that business with the IRS. Now if you have any vendors that provide services to you, things like lawyers, accountants, consultants, even people you rent from, if you provide more than $600 of payment to them during a calendar year, you may be required to issue what's called a Form 1099 miscellaneous to those vendors that declares how much you've paid to them during the year. And that is recorded with the IRS. In order to fill out that form, you need the company's name, their physical address, and their entity identification number. Now here in Wave Accounting, we have a place to store the name, we have a place to store the address, but we don't have a place to store the entity identification number. And so at the end of the year, you'll be scrambling to pull all that information together. It's really recommended that you collect and store all of those pieces of information on all new vendors that may potentially need a 1099 right from the beginning. So at the end of the year, it makes it very easy to stay in compliance. So as we onboard this new vendor, I want to enter in the EIN number for this vendor. As there isn't a field to do that, my recommendation is to use the account number field in the vendor page for the entity identification number. So we're going to put it up here in the account number. Now the thing about the account number field in Wave Accounting is it does not allow any special characters, only letters and numbers, which means that the dashes that you usually see in a social security number or EIN number are not going to be in there. You can only write in the nine digits that make up that number. So we're just going to put in their entity identification number and just know in our own heads that the account number field represents their entity identification number and we'll have that available in the future should we need it. That being said, everything else within this form is identical to the customer which we just entered a second ago. So I'm just going to quickly go in and enter all of that information uh, just like we did with, with the customer. Okay, so now we have all of the information entered in for this particular vendor, so we can go ahead and save it. And now, just like the customers, we're going to have to go in and add every single vendor. Now, one thing I would note, oftentimes we have a lot of little vendors that we buy small things from that we really don't have any relationship with. They're simply entered because we need them in order to get them in the system. Um, for those types of vendors, I would recommend not entering them into your accounting system as an actual vendor. These would be things like McDonald's or Walmart, um, Amazon, where we're just buying little things here and there and we don't really track a relationship with them. For those types of vendors, what I would recommend is just creating a miscellaneous vendor. So I can come in here and add a vendor and just call it miscellaneous vendor. In this case, I'm going to actually go against what I've told you earlier and simply save the name because there is no real contact because it represents multiple different vendors. And that way, if you ever have a transaction that requires you to enter a vendor and you don't want to track the information for that vendor, you can just use the miscellaneous vendor. And that way you don't have 600 different vendors in your list when there's only maybe five that you actually care about tracking. So that's my recommendation. You don't have to do it that way. You can list every single vendor if you wanted to, but I find that this tends to keep your vendor list fairly clean and uh, manageable for you as you grow your business. So with that, now we have all of our vendors and our customers created. That is the last piece of the setup for Wave Accounting, and we are now ready to move on to the next phase, which is learning how to enter transactions and really use Wave Accounting to track your business's finances. Thank you for watching the Bootstrapper's Guide to Wave Accounting. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to click the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this video with other entrepreneurs. Doing so will help us to continue 
creating more videos like this one for you and other WAVE users here on The Accounting Lab.